Today I'd like to talk about a particularly important part of British history and the history of the pub. The council estate pub. This is a soon to be forgotten relic, which most people do not really care for. The only people that frequent council estate pubs tend to be the people either still within the council estates that have them, or the people that remember them from their youth. Behind me is one of the tower blocks, which is a reminder of the post-1940s, the post-1945 council estates, which were built after the Blitz because of so many demolished houses during the bombing. There was a lot of room, shall we say, for new builds, and they went up very quickly. Over here, you can see more evidence of it. And then here is the carpenter's arms, resting within the carpenter's estate, which would be the only social hub for many people and would mean the difference between loneliness and company. Why don't we have a little look at this pub from a slightly different angle. This is, for many of them, their last little run on this earth of ours. This pub in particular is very much loved by the West Ham fans that come in frequently, uh, and the locals obviously, but each council estate pub will have its own special meaning to the people either from that estate or its surrounding areas for different reasons. I could give you reasons, but theirs would be different. If we just have a little look, as I mentioned behind, I doubt there's any council estate pubs or dare I say wonderful pubs over there. In fact, I know there isn't. That's what we're looking towards, the future. I'm now in Newham's E16 at another council estate pub or council pub. This one is the Henley Arms, another fundamental location to the locals that would have meant the difference between loneliness or company. Now, this location has actually had, since the 70s, over 50 pubs closed making this building behind me that much more of a relic. I know I keep using that word, it's, it's because it's relevant in what we're talking about. And if you was to turn around there, you'll see the contrast of this pub and the road I'm on, which is the new world which is forming. And if you was to walk slightly towards me, cameraman, ever, not too much, and we just turn on the face of this road here, we see what look like quaint residential homes that remind us more so of suburbs or some of the inner city homes, which are very much in contrast with the surrounding area, especially if we think of how many pubs this place has lost, it's truly a shadow of its former self. And there are various factors that would have caused this. There would have been people coming in to buy land, to make um, new industrial factories and what have you. There would have been uh, a change in migration there would have been a series of events which led to the slow changing of this place. It wasn't overnight. And as you can see, little quaint roads like this are becoming very quickly a thing of the past. Despite to many people the council estate pub looking standoffish or unappealing, to others it's the remaining reminder of where they come from and who they are. People who detested their childhood growing up in the state, just like that one, still see it as an important part of their very core and identity. That's the truth. So 
this is the two calms in E14. And just before we go and have a look at some of the quaint characteristics which make it such a recognizable council estate pub, we thought we'd come up here and get a, a good look at the backdrop because behind it you can see the financial sector, you can see Canary Wharf. Just up there, you can see all of these new buildings popping up. Some have been there a while in the background, but some of these are brand new. And there in contrast is the council estate, which would have drunk from the Took Arms, as well as this one here. There's another tower block just there to the cameraman's right. And this all would have been part of the same estate. Now, interestingly, while I'm here, I'll take a moment to just talk about flat roof pubs. <laughs> Hello, mate. You watch me. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm filming right now. Look, <laughs> huh? Council of State pubs. <laughs> As I was saying, I just got interrupted by someone who recognised this. Um, this is a flat roof pub. With flat roof pubs, the thing is, not all flat roof pubs are council estate pubs, but the majority of them are, and not all council estate pubs are flat roof pubs. But like I said, you will find the majority of flat roof pubs on council estates. And this would differentiate them from um, the sort of peaked pubs or Victorian style pubs in which we're more accustomed to. So the flat roof pub, there's a famous saying that actually goes around in, in Britain among some. Uh, the comedian Sean Locke actually gave reference to it, which is never drink in a flat roof pub. And that, that comes from the, the working class troublesome sentiment which has been handed down to the average council estate pub. But that's an opinion because a lot of fantastic characters, which we'll talk about in the near future, have been produced from such a stoic, gritty environment. And here, like with many council estate pubs, it's actually attached either to the flats themselves or a row of shops, which would be incorporated into a planning scheme, meaning that the government had plotted this entire area ahead of time, knowing it would have shops and so on. All the amenities would be planned before a single person moved in. So here's an, an example. We see there, the pub attached to this row of shops, which its original purpose would have been, well, the likes of laundrettes, fish and chip shops, there's still a couple of those sort of facilities on here, but now they've changed over time. So this is the familiar look of the once council estate and the council estate pub in which it would share the space with. As you can see, it's its own little kingdom down here where you wouldn't really need to leave the place if you didn't have an, an excuse. And as the residents that grew up here are pushed out into the suburbs and new residents are brought in, it's quite clear to the, even the untrained eye that this place won't stand a chance in the face of gentrification, be it in the drinking world or the building industry. So I'm now in Poplar, E14. This estate was built around the time of the Festival of Britain. This estate was built in 1951, making it one of the very first council estates of its kind. And one of the first to have an open market which was available to the public as well as the actual council, council estate residents themselves. So it's no guessing in that case why the pub behind me is called the Festival Inn. And if we scroll over, we see an old fashioned clock tower, which went up in the early days, which would have been around before people, you know, not everyone would have had a watch and so on. So that would have been particularly handy to the people that lived here from the 50s onwards. So let's remember that just after the war, many prefabricated buildings were put up because there wasn't enough 
housing for people at the time. So directly after the war, people were living in a lot of cabins, living side by side in makeshift homes before the likes of these estates were completed. I did go in there and there was a, a lovely lady who let me use the loo, I had a quick jack dash. And it had a very old fashioned, nice setting in there with some pool tables and what have you. As we mentioned earlier, some of the council estate pubs are built not just into the shops, but into the flats themselves, the living accommodation. So here is a prime example. So Caligums is actually attached not only to the shops, but to the residents themselves. Because there, there is a difference between a council estate pub and a council estate local. So you can still be a detached pub, which is part of the council estate, but you're still different from a, a pub which is just outside of the estate. That's your local, it's not your estate pub. I'm currently in EC1 at the Golden Lane Estate, which is next to a very famous estate, a very expensive estate called the Barbican, which is owned by the City of London. Now you're gonna need a few pound notes if you want to live in there. That's not a council estate. Now this one, owned by the Corporation of London, built in the 50s, this is a council estate. And you can see that sort of typical 50s, 60s, modernist architecture, which, you know, it, it does look very brutal, but in comparison with a lot of the new builds going up, I still find it more charming than what we're seeing today. And you'd be very lucky, in my opinion, to get a flat in somewhere like that if you're on the council, you know, but it does come down to opinion. Now, just before we go around the front and have a look, I'm going to ask my cameraman to do a, a little pirouette, a nice slow spin, as it were, to show you the sort of environment that we're in. Wonderful. So what we're going to do is we're just going to walk around the front and have a look at it because it's glorious from the front. Whether you liked it or not, you know, you, you as part of the nightlife and the voices would be familiar, the people would be familiar. So, you know, there's that little bit of home downstairs as well as upstairs. Uh, hanging out your balcony, you'd be able to wave at people you knew and things like that. And they'd probably tempt you downstairs. And this is... As I said, um, it's an affluent area. Over there is Barbican Station, and all these estates here are packed with affluent characters. But this is a very different world that you're looking at. So it's, it's, it's a council estate plot in a high value area. So the estate was built in the 50s, but you can see here the pub itself, the Shakespeare, 1964. And you can see the estate runs all the way down the road and has a series of shops underneath it. But this was the pub. So I'm now at SE17 on the border between Woolworth and Kennington to look at this estate here and the pub attached to it. And if we turn around, this is a lively estate with obviously it's still got plenty of residents that have been here for years. So this is another iconic council estate with its little resident pub here. It's still look, come around here for me cameraman. You see, it's still serving Sunday roasts, fish and chips. It's still got that wonderful, dare I say, British vibe to it. And directly above, 
on the balconies, look. <laughs> Literally living above your local. But it might um, look a bit samey to you if you're watching this, but one of the reasons we're visiting so many locations is whether you're from England or from London or you're from across the world, you're getting an insight into the past and the present, and how it was and where we're heading. So I hope that when you see these sites, you're, you're really taking it in for what we're trying to show you. So this is Rollo and Doddington estate in Battersea. It's humongous. It's, it's absolutely humongous, this estate. Another reminder here of the shops which are attached to it, which is a reminder to us that the people in the estate never really need to leave home. You'd have to find an excuse to go out on a Friday or Saturday night to go somewhere else because you had everything you needed, your hairdressers, you know, your chip shops and so on. You know, um, a little reminder just to show us how much this place has changed over the decades. You certainly wouldn't have seen a, a plant-based calf in an estate like this throughout my childhood anyway. So you can see it's been heavily gentrified and changed. And this was a very rough, area and if we relate it to today the sort of punters that we get coming into these establishments now uh, some of them are relatively wealthy people that are stepping in from Chelsea and other areas in order to enjoy a night out it's not so much the case that the locals because you can no longer predict who's living in these flats it's it's not the same as it used to be you'll get a lot of people there that are maybe running businesses out of them and things like that it's a completely different environment. So we've got three pubs to look at on this estate, but we're just going to pop up at the pubs because the estate's so massive, it would take us too long to walk through. Right? See the sign there, hiding behind the tree? It's changed its name. It's now called South West 11. And strangely, I was just talking to um, my cameraman about this Tesco because we can't tell whether the Tesco's new or not. We know the Tesco's new, but it's difficult to tell if the building was always there. But if you come and look at this pub from the side, for me, right, a Tesco attached to the pub, it might be handy to get your cigarettes, but it's, it's, not, it's not a good look. And that's the entrance to the actual Doddington estate. But if you just glance over this flat roof pub here, you can tell it's been repainted recently. Now we're at the second pub of the estate. This is the Magic Garden. Now, you don't need to be a, a detective to see how much this property will have changed in the last couple of decades. If we look at the sort of advertising, you know, it's, it's not particularly old fashioned. I go as far as to say it looks overtly liberal to me. Obviously you've got all your stickers plastered all over the place. Once again, it comes down to opinion, doesn't it, of what you what you think is a, a presentable pub. Some people would say it looks a lot more colourful and appealing now, but I'd suggest even when it was rottier and probably far more dangerous, it was probably more meaningful and welcoming then. So the third pub on the estate is the Payer and horse, which I'm going to be kind about it, certainly doesn't look like the average council estate pub to me. Come with me, let's have a little look. Let's just say it's uh, like the other pub, it's somewhat liberal in nature, if that's what you're into. And what would have once been a very rough and ready place for the locals has become a bit of a... People that didn't grow up in such an environment are coming to drink here so they feel a bit more rough and ready but in reality it's um it's nothing like it looks in the tin well it depends if you've got a trained eye you'll see exactly what it is in the tin in all my days of whether i was on a construction site or on the back of a lorry loading stuff at the end of the day when i was going to the pub i knew what i was after i wasn't looking to buy books
so I mean that's that's a clear sign in itself but it's not a normal pub is it now it's very deceiving because there's parts of it that look like a classic council estate pub but it, it truly isn't and in my opinion these will last a lot longer than dare I say genuine council estate pubs because these are being given custom from wealthy people whereas if we think about somewhere like the Carpenter's Arms in Stratford that's on a limited basis that the owner um, is being offered money to sell up and he's having to refuse whereas an establishment like this it relies on outside entities coming in traveling in in order to enjoy their night whereas in the past it was one of the few options you had that you could afford coming from the estate different world different times